Hello and welcome to my YouTube where we talk Zen, meditation, and sometimes tea. <laughs> if you'd like to learn my spin on these topics, hang around, subscribe for more. Also subscribe to my Twitch. Uh, we go over this stuff live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 Eastern. I'd love to talk about tea, we talk about meditation, we talk about beauty, that's so much fun, and other fun stuff. I, I just love it, it gives, you, gives me so much energy. So please join me there on Twitch. Today in this video, we'll be discussing how and why to meditate according to my own personal philosophy, uh, and then also how and why, uh, why and how are not the right way to look at it. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that. And it's really important to understand that I'm not connected to any lineage, any meditative lineage, or any spiritual tradition. So I'm not really even advanced enough to explain what I think, what, what I'm doing in a, in a framework or in a language that would resonate with other people. I can't really translate my framework to another framework. So keep that in mind. Um, if things don't quite resonate with you, it, it, it's, it's sort of, I, I'm kind of stuck in my own uh, language. I'm trying to expand a little bit, but it's taking a lot of work for me. So ultimately this instruction is, is all inclusive. It shouldn't reject anything. It shouldn't reject anything. Uh, but this is just one perspective, trying to help people who uh, have learned about meditation from my TikTok or have just talked to me about meditation and they kind of want to know what I do and why I do it. So this is just a practical sort of explanation for people who are beginning their practice or maybe some people who are trying to expand and continue their practice. So first we'll start with why I meditate. Um, I'm going to save the, the notion for why, how, how and why are, are wrong ways to look at it. We'll save that for the end. But why meditate? First, it's to notice yourself fully without any distractions. So we, we go constantly throughout the world with distractions. We, we, we have a feeling and then we may distract ourselves by watching TV or eating some certain foods or a lot of TikTok and, and things like that. So we want to get beyond those distractions. There, there, there's almost anything that we can do to distract it. And meditation is the way to see beneath those distractions. So we can accurately see exactly what's, what's going on with us. We can see the good, we can see the bad, uh, and we, we can figure out what to do with that information. The next thing is, is to notice urgency, arise and fall. Uh, oftentimes there are lots of things that seem urgent. Urgency, I'm going to do, um, I'm sort of, I'm sort of equivocating, equivocating maybe? I'm sort of uh, using urgency in a sense as, we think of it as significant. We think of things as important. Oftentimes that arises and it falls away. We want to notice it coming and going. We don't usually pay attention to things becoming important and then becoming no longer important. We just, we're just tricked by the importance of it. So we want to see that actual arising and falling and, and sort of get the idea that everything is not important. That way at least the urgency of everything falls away eventually. We want to be aware of that. Third thing is really we want to practice concentration. Concentration I'm using very broadly here, but we just want to pay attention to certain things and we, we want to mainly we want to focus and appreciate those things that come and go. So um, it, it, we get into this difficult situation sometimes where we want something and we get it and we still want more. We keep wanting because we've never practiced appreciating. We've never practiced uh, enjoying what we actually have. So this is what, what part of the meditation is to actually enjoy whatever it is that you have. So whatever you present it with, have it and appreciate and enjoy it. So those are a couple of reasons why we should meditate. How to meditate, very, very simple. Step one, you, you set a space for meditation. That This is the, the, the most basic thing. You want to set a space for meditation. That just means a specific area and a specific time. So if you want to meditate one day, say you're going to meditate 30 minutes from now, or you're going to meditate at three o'clock, you're going to meditate at five, whatever you're going to do, and you're going to meditate for 10 minutes. You set that time and there you go. That's step one. You need to set a time. You need to set a space too. And when you set the space, uh, if, you're, if you're going more advanced into it, you want to have that space uh, ideally only for meditation. You sort of want to um, energize that space with meditation. Uh, think of it like when you go into the restroom, you sort of have to go, you know, that sort of memory there. You want to cultivate that with meditation. You have a space so that when you go to that space, the meditative mind sort of arises immediately. And that's also good for your bed. You want to keep your bed for that, but we don't, we don't get to all those things. So you want to set a space for your meditation, a time uh, and, a, and a location. Second thing you want to do is observe. That's sort of it. You, you sit there and you observe. Um, observe. This is almost too simple to really 
explain. Observing, just pay attention, right? You just want to notice things that are happening. So if you are sitting, you want to sit in a comfortable position, you want to look at the floor or look at the wall, something like that, keep your eyes open. If you are noticing pain coming and going, just notice the pain, come and go. If you are distracted by, uh, you know, maybe you have kids in the other room, they're, they're being loud, or you have somebody knocking your door, you have construction outside, you wanna notice these things, you wanna pay attention to them. You don't necessarily want to come and go, that'll, that'll be for the next step. Um, you just wanna notice it. So if you have the urge to stop doing something, stop doing it. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you stop or if you don't stop. It doesn't really matter if um, if you have children outside and they're making a bunch of noise. If you decide to stop meditating, uh, if you decide to stop sitting rather, and you get up and, and you know reprimand your kids or whatever you do, um, or if you just let them continue doing whatever they're doing and sit and meditate. Um, it doesn't matter if you hear construction noises and you get angry and you yell at the construction workers, or if you are peaceful and just sit there. It doesn't matter. What you want to do is observe and notice what happens. Either way, you want to notice what happens. That is extremely important. Just notice it. Then it goes into a third step. We want to actually appreciate what is happening. So in this step, it's slightly different. It goes along with the observation, but it's appreciation. So if you do feel pain, um, you don't want to reject the pain. You want to enjoy the pain. Enjoy isn't the right word, but appreciate more so. You want to appreciate the pain. Uh, in this sense, if we go back to what I was saying earlier about the concentration, you, you want to have something and you want to appreciate it. You don't want to, you want to practice enjoying what you actually have so that um, in some other point in time when you get the things that you desire, you can actually enjoy the things that you are desiring, right? When you, when you eat a piece of that chocolate cake, you don't immediately start thinking of the next chocolate cake that you want. You want to enjoy the chocolate cake that you have. So in order to do that, you have to enjoy the white rice or the bland, disgusting food that you have in front of you immediately so you can practice actually enjoying something and practice actually focusing on that thing. So um, when you meditate, how to meditate, you, you set your time, you sit in a comfortable position, and you just pay attention, and you appreciate everything that arises. So that's how, that's why. Now I wanna kinda of go into why, how, and why are not the right way to think about it. So in my, my personal philosophy, in my practice, there are no reasons. Reasons uh, are things to get rid of. Um, reasons are one of those things, that's sort of the urgency that comes and goes, that that includes reasons. So when we, when we think that this causes that, there's an there's a urgency that, that, that I'm gonna be calling it urgency. There's a significance, there's a tie between those things. That comes and goes. That doesn't exist. It, it, it comes and it goes, it's transient. Uh, whenever you project a reason onto something, well, it doesn't matter, we don't have to get into details there. Suffice to say, um, that reason doesn't matter. So there is, there is no if, there is no when, there is no because, there is no there, therefore, there are no connections at all. None of that is there. Um, so there is no why. There is no why. And also, <laughs> there's no distinction between meditation and not meditation. So there's no how. <laughs> you can't meditate because there's no difference between not meditating and meditating. Uh, in, the, in the most simplistic way, uh, the way I, that I would like to think about it, or if you're a beginner, the way to think about it is whatever you do during the time that you set for meditation is meditation. If you say from three o'clock, I want to meditate for the next 10 minutes, and when three o'clock comes, you're too scared to actually sit down, that's a part of the meditation. Notice how afraid you are to do something. Uh, notice that when you are confused about certain things, if you avoid doing those things, you want to notice that. And you want to notice that even if, when you do sit down and meditate, that all the things that happened before in your life are affecting you now. You're thinking about the life before or you're thinking about things that are happening in the future. There is no distinction between the time that you are sitting down and meditating and the times before and after. Uh, it, it gets real, really fuzzy. So um, this is super important because you, you'll notice that everything affects your life. Uh, and your meditation affects everything else. Everything is affecting everything. Of course, this is a little contradictory what I was saying with the why, that there are no connections, and now in the how, I'm saying that there are infinite, everything's connected. Uh, that's a part of the fun. <laughs> a big part of the fun is the, these little contradictions and, and things. Um, so to recap really quickly, set some time, sit comfortably, pay close attention, and appreciate everything that comes. That's all you need to do. That is the foundation of meditation. Um, if you are very, very hung up on 
um, having a, a, a calm mind. You might want to focus on something so you can hum to yourself, you can look at something, look at a fire, or look at a light, something like that. It doesn't really matter. But in essence, you just want to pay attention. Appreciate what you are observing at the moment. Eventually, you'll be able to clearly see what your life is and what is happening, and you'll respond naturally to fix all those problems, if there are any problems to fix. If you want more of this uh, spiritual contradictory nonsense, we've got a lot of Zen stories on this channel and they play a lot on that theme. It's very important to, to get over that idea of contradicting because, because when you notice contradictions, uh, usually it sparks a part of your mind that is uh, <laughs> it's thinking. And essentially you want to get beyond your thoughts to get into a different form of logic, a higher, it's not really higher as a higher hierarchy of it, but it's, a, it's a, a more broad form of logic. It's a very different type of logic. So you want to get more into that. Also join me live on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 Eastern. We can, we can do it live. But if you have any specifics or any actual problems we can go over, uh, we can go over little details. If you want more help doing certain things, you don't need to sit in lotus position, but you can do yoga and all that stuff. And we can talk about it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this whole video. I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.